Hello, I'm Paul Seven Lewis and welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. Coming up, I'm reviewing the Royal Shakespeare Company's delayed production of The Winter's Tale, which has moved from Stratford to the small screen in the form of BBC Four. The production is set in, or at least starts in, the 1950s, uh, when we find ourselves in the court of the King of Sicily, Leontes. Within minutes, the loving relationship between Leontes and his wife Hermione is in tatters, as Leontes succumbs to jealousy and the belief that his lifelong best friend Polixenes, the King of Bohemia, is having an affair with Hermione. Now, you might find it hard to accept how easily this happens, but the thing is, Shakespeare is the king of dramatists, so the spoken word carries you along. The words in this play may not match the greatest of Shakespeare's plays, say Hamlet, but they tumble out, providing image after image of the human condition, and with a speed and style always matching the characters. The result, despite the implausibility of the plot at many points, is deep, believable characters caught up in a moving drama. So thank goodness director Erica Wyman has confidence that Shakespeare knows what he's doing and she's chosen some excellent actors to convey the script. Well that's my one minute review. Keep watching for more about the actors and the dramatic change at the halfway point. No question, The Winter's Tale is a play. Uh, it's not a book or a movie, and the RSC has filmed it as a play. Uh, Bridget Caldwell's film direction is kept simple, and that's to its credit. There are close-ups, of course, but otherwise we're left to see the actors on a large stage, which itself is sparsely decorated by set designer Tom Piper. Any music, uh, which is provided by the eclectic Isabel Waller-Bridge, is occasional and enhances rather than intrudes. So... As I said, all credit to director Erica Wyman. Although The Winter's Tale is technically a comedy, the first half is pretty much a tragedy. Uh, Leontes condemns his new baby, uh, which he presumes is by Polixenes, to death. He puts his wife on trial with tragic results. In fact, there are a number of deaths and apparent deaths, uh, deaths which bring home to Leontes how wrong he's been. And don't forget, this is the play with the most famous stage direction in theatrical history, Exit Pursued by a Bear. And let me tell you, that bear isn't after a cuddle. Joseph Closer plays Leontes uh, as quite ordinary, uh, somewhat pathetic. Uh, even when he's at his worst, he seems more mentally unstable than tyrannical, uh, which I think helps offset the tragic nature of this comedy. Kimi Jo Jacobs as Hermione conveys her lines with regal authority and dignified passion. Ben Kaplan, playing Leontes' right-hand man, Camillo, makes every careful syllable suggest the conflict between loyalty and conscience. Amanda Hadding as Hermione's broken-hearted companion, Paulina, touches us with her uncontrolled anger. So the first half, which is about 90 minutes and takes us to the end of Act 3, is pretty dark. And having set up the tragedy, Shakespeare changes the tone. It's 16 years later, a time gap which itself is unusual for Shakespeare, and to some extent this is a play about the healing power of time. In this time, Leontes has been grieving and repenting. And we begin the second half, now in the 1960s, with some rock and roll. And it becomes much more like the comedies of Shakespeare that we're familiar with. There are people disguising their origins. There's forbidden love. There's a mischief-making rascal, uh, Ortilicus, played with a cheeky chappy style by Anne Odique. And all's well that ends well. Well, except for those that died. There's a romantic pastoral theme to the second half, including young lovers, shepherds and a sheep-shearing festival. This makes the 60s setting very appropriate, it being a time when pop culture embraced romanticism and nature. In fact, the concept of contrasting the austere 50s with the free 60s is a highly effective way of representing the two halves of The Winter's Tale. So it's a bittersweet ending, a story of redemption, forgiveness and reconciliation, which doesn't deny the ill that has gone before, 
and is clear that some things that have been lost will never be regained. There are some nice touches in this production. Um, to emphasise that Leontes is conducting a show trial of Hermione, we see it partly as being televised uh, with early black and white TV cameras. And later on, a feast is partly being filmed on Super 8 or some kind of early home movie. The beautiful costumes by Madeleine Gerling are elegant in the first half and more flamboyant in the second. One thing about The Winter's Tale, there's a lot of talk and not a lot of action, in that a surprising amount of the action takes place off stage and is reported, uh, like, for example, much of the reconciliation. But I said, as I said earlier, it's a joy to watch the actors speaking the words unadulterated by any cleverness on the director's part. I give the RSC's Winter's Tale four stars. I hope you enjoyed this review, or at least found it useful. Uh, if you did, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a button somewhere uh, in the bottom part of the screen, and uh, you'll be the first to know about future reviews and features. You can also read my reviews at oneminutetheatrereviews.co.uk. If you're interested in musicals, I uh, present a show on Box Office Radio online, uh, which is available as a podcast on mixcloud.com, which features songs from the musicals on various themes. Thank you for watching.